Hello guys, today we'll be power scaling or just analyzing Godzilla X Imposter the finale. So let's start. I'll also kind of be going into like the basics and just going over what's happening in the scenes, but it won't be the longest video, hopefully. Right here, we see the first instance of the Kaiser Pulse. And currently, I mean, it's pretty strong. Remember, each Omniversal God that keeps getting summoned from different points of time throughout the series is much stronger than the one previous. This is a stronger Omniversal God than the one that Red Spiral and First Form Kaiser fought. So just keep that in mind for later. This is one shot. This is basically just the one shot right now. And he's not even at full power. I'm not trying. This is just a casual one shot. So if you're probably wondering, dimensions in this have borders, dimensional borders, or whatever you want to call them. So these are infinite in size and infinite dimensions. And these are very, very difficult to break. I mean, like, it is insanely difficult to break. Not every character can do this. And Godzilla is doing a massive feat here. I mean, like, just casually breaking this is, like, a crazy feat. That is very difficult for other characters to achieve. And just know, these, there are infinite amount of these. So that's when things kind of get a little crazy. And so judging what is more powerful, the atomic pulse or the beam? Because the, these two are probably closer in power than you would expect. The atomic pulse is basically like an atomic breath, but like all angles. That's basically what I'm going to say. It is an atomic breath, but at all angles. Is it more powerful than the pulse? Well, the thing about the pulse is, it's made to incinerate an opponent that is right on top of you. Or, like, if you're hitting Godzilla, you can, like, stop him from beaming. Like, if you hit him hard enough, he will stop his atomic breath if he's charging it up. So that's a problem. The atomic pulse hitting him or doing what you want or attacking him won't stop him from beaming you. That's why he can use the atomic pulse to incinerate or knock someone off of him. And it has similar power to the beam. It might be a little bit more powerful depending on where it hits, but the reason why I'd say the beam could be more powerful is because the atomic pulse, it's energy being dispersed in a larger amount of space, not pointed into a small thin beam. And the atomic pulse is just bigger. So if you're further away, the less damage you'll take. <clears throat> These are page replies. Again, we saw them back a while ago, a couple, I think three or four episodes ago. These are just giant versions of a normal page reply, which the statistics for them are somewhere on my channel, on the community polls. And they're, they're, they're average. I mean, these are like average monsters. It's kind of like a pack of male moodles or war bats. They're not really a threat, but they are pretty big, though. The giant ones are massive. Remember, these are the Omniversal God's personal ones. That means he uses them to make sure, like, to slow people down. So in this scene, you see Godzilla charging up this time, but you see his eye. This is obviously a massive reference from Godzilla Kong when we see Godzilla use his atomic breath right at Scylla. Not at Scylla, I mean Tiamat. How did I make that mistake? In the water, and we see it come out like that. And something interesting actually happens after this. You see, he's holding up the head of one of them. So there is kind of a couple of reasons why this happened. So basically, Godzilla is able to fire his atomic breath. But this atomic breath, the Kaiser atomic breath, which we saw in finale, or not the finale, I mean the episode previous, is able to incinerate things 
with low difficulty. We saw it incinerate the omniversal gods, multiple of them. But the thing about it is that the Kaiser atomic breath, if it hits something for a good amount of time, it will completely incinerate it. That's what makes it so deadly, unlike the red spiral ray atomic breath, which hitting things with it will cause them to explode violently, ripping chunks off. Kaiser atomic breath is more controlled and cleaner. And it's easier to use than the red spiral ray. While this way, what he most likely did is he cut most of them, instantly incinerating them, and just to, chose to like cut one's head off. No, he's not at full power either here. This is just him trying to, well, get to the void as fast as possible because he's tired of walking through these infinite dimensions. They get annoying after a while. So he's basically just trying to speed up the job. You see, I'm also going to say, the more he lights up, it's not how powerful he is. The more his body shows energy or the more, more his beam is like lighter or like that, or the longer he charges up, he can make more power. He can also fire off a very powerful beam with a short charge, but it's just the amount of glow on the beam normally. Normally for scaling, you can just say the amount of glow on the beam. Instantly destroys infinite dimensions, and now you're in the void. This, and I'm just going to tell you, the void has the dimensional borders, which are way stronger than the other ones. They are beyond infinitely times more durable than the other dimensional borders. I mean, at this point, it's like, this is made by the Omniversal God, so no one can get in or get out. So if you somehow get in, there is absolutely no way you're getting out. That is literally the way it's made. This is the Omniversal God's mock true form, which he has as an avatar that if you somehow kill that, then you'll face the real threat. The Geyser Atomic Breath basically does nothing. You can try to hit the skin or hit the Omniversal God. The reality warping on this thing is way too crazy. I mean, like, he's able to create a portal once it makes contact. It hits him back. But, so this would add to the GXI got Celestial Durability. He's able to tank the beam. Now, this is with the force field. Why does he put the force field? He really puts it up so he can continue to beam. Even if he hits himself with the beam, it won't really stop him or hurt him. It might, like, stun him for a second, but he can just beam again. But if he wants to consistently do it without anyone bothering him, he'll just put up the force field so he can keep going. The only verse of Godzilla able to use telekinesis to lift up Godzilla and casually just disrespect him. Right here, he's also draining Godzilla's power and absorbing it. Right here. His beam is able to cut right through the Omniversal Gods. Oh, right through it. The Omniversal Gods beam is able to literally cut right through Godzilla's atomic breath. It doesn't care. Like, it doesn't care. It can go right through it, and you know how powerful the Kaiser beam is. You know how powerful it is. So the summarize this fight, Godzilla is just like getting destroyed. At this point, he's getting his power so How Godzilla, the imposter, and Void sense this void how it's come. You can actually see right here. Ami versus got sucking up the Kaiser energy, which is boundless and has no limit. Though it's infinite energy, somehow the Omniversal God's mock true form is able to absorb it somehow, which is pretty interesting. They get here, and Voidzilla fires a beam that does completely nothing but that's a this strong. I'll just let this fight play out. Haven't you noticed that their attacks have done nothing? Now we have thermal form. Though it doesn't really have any physical changes, it's a lot. It's so much more powerful than Kaiser form. The thermal form is 7, 70,000 times more powerful than Kaiser form, than base Kaiser. And Kaiser at full power and thermal at full power. Full power thermal Godzilla is 500 trillion times more powerful than Kaiser. Right now, he's not at full power. 
this is basically like what a red spiral right form is. It is out of control and like very, very insanely powerful. Like, yeah. Oh, you don't see it. The pulses actually do burn and affect the Omniverse God's true form as they do hurt his mock true form. Though it might not be significant, it still hurts. It's not like simple. Now they're just bullying him at this point. The atomic breath are also able to severely burn him. While Hellgodzilla's purple atomic breath is not much of a threat. While we have Voidzilla's burning ish form, I'm just going to call it the orange form, is able to do really something not as significant, but is able to affect the only person's eye. But we see it between all the beams. Which is a big oh yeah. How that though also has a force field, which he can use as disposal. Right now, Hell Godzilla is going to a full power form. We'll see in a second, calling the Hellbat. I like to call this or this might be the name. It's called Hellbat Hell Godzilla. Or Hell Godzilla Hellbat form. It's able to fire an insanely powerful beam. It's a pulse beam making it even better than the other ones. Look what it does, it one shots the army first guard, but then you have to deal with this. The, com the final form. Did you see that? Godzilla fires the thermal beam, which is so much more powerful than Kaiser, but he, he just needs one shot in and set back the base form. This makes him lose all of his power. All his power is drained. All of his power. He's powerless at this point. Back into a weakened, severely weakened base form. Remember that. Really. How Godzilla tries this thing, but Army vs. God uses a very weak beam to beat it. But it's a, it doesn't even try at this point. But it just gets one shot back into the base form. We're going to let this play out until something significant happens. So you see the mech is able to fire three beams, actually fire four from two hands. The proton screen, this is his full power, but he's also able to tank a beam from Yummy for Scott. This is, remember, the mech is kind of like a side character, but he's weak compared to everyone else. He's still able to tank this insane attack that knocked everyone else out. Look how he teleports in posture. His beam is able that the speed of Voidzilla's beam is does it really have a speed? I mean the Omniversal God's beam, does it have a speed? Not really. I mean you could claim it's faster than infinite speed, which is actually pretty much true. It could go at immeasurable speeds. Because there's no like speed speed for it. And we see the imposter react to it. Though the knife is able to absorb it, it causes an explosion knocking him back. There's an actual good reason why his atomic breath didn't destroy it. So... If we put him in a different dimension like those voids, his atomic breath could easily destroy it, even in the severely weakened, low-powered form. It's just right now that Godzilla is at the point where his atomic breath can't destroy the void, void's dimensional borders, which is actually pretty interesting. Next. <laughs> Now, all their weakened base form beams together is able to actually destroy it. Not able to hurt the only first shot, but it doesn't do it. Yeah, and Roxilla does have some upgrade. See him do his pot in Frosty Kill.
You literally see the army versus God easily cross through dimensional borders without any problem. Now, here's the good part. We literally know that Godzilla lost all of his power. It got completely drained. But he does have the ability to instantly regain it. Like here. Does he really have... He doesn't go back into his final form. He goes back into his technically base form. Which is kind of interesting. His base, normal base form. And his evolved form. Which is kind of cool though. We haven't really seen him in that form in a very long time. This form is not weak either. Look at this. Look how his atomic breath isn't as vibrant as normal. It's really not vibrant, like normally how it is. It's because it's severely weakened. He's still, even though he did gain a massive power up at base, he's still severely weakened. Without a doubt, he's still severely weakened. But let's let this play on. The time he's able to reflect it, reflect the omniverse of speed without any trouble. And we see his atomic breath, though it's not doing anything, it actually has enough force to push him back in a way to make him fly, which is kind of cool. I always found that really cool in this. And we do get some pretty cool references in this, too. Look at him using his atomic breath to fly into the drop kick. Yeah, he does use the atomic breath to fly right there. Right here, he does fly with his atomic breath. And then you see how he's not really like going up. It's just instant. He just he dropped it. Doesn't do much, but it does what he can. It does push him through a border. How about those beef does absolutely nothing, and he gets yeeted right through a dimensional with really no problems. Now we have Vengeance Godzilla versus GXI. This fight we've seen on Central versus Channel and technically as a battle analysis of mine, but this is really how it happened. Remember, Vengeance Godzilla is at his full power and goes into rage mode. He's in full power rage mode. And GXI is severely weakened in his base form at this point. Vengeance Godzilla pulls up the first attack. And this is what happened. It hurts him. It doesn't hurt him, but it's surprising. It really pushes him back. Remember, he's not using his force field at all. At all. And he's still able to walk through it. His tail is able to knock him to the ground. He did say able to throw him. But we see him transform into his Kaiser form. Why? Why is he going to Kaiser? GXI, his thoughts would basically be he could definitely take Vengeance Godzilla's silver form at max power and base. Could he? I mean, that's a good question. I don't think he can. Even though he is severely weakened, he is very powerful, even in his severely weakened base form. It's just like the main issue would be the reality bending. He's not going to get around that. His base form would probably lose the Vengeance insane difficulty. I see Vengeance being the base form insane difficulty. That's how I see it. But now this is where things kind of even out a little as he get into a more powerful part of the fight. The Kaiser Beam, which is not charged for a long time and is not at its full power, he's able to do that with it. Push him back. Their beams don't really affect each other. They're kind of basically immune to heat at this point. Like, the heat isn't doing anything. It's just, like, there. It doesn't really hurt them. Well, the disappearing act, we literally see him teleport. Right behind. That's just how fast he is. He's extremely fast. 
He does another drop kick. That is actually kind of his favorite thing to do. And he's able to use the force, or let's call reality bending, to pick him up. And like, with ease, just kind of starts disrespecting him. Really bad. With this, uses his reality bending and stops time in a way that he basically stopped him from moving. He can't do anything in this. He's stuck. He's frozen. But it's not all over. He can get out of this, even though it's very difficult. He can still get out of this situation. His atomic pulse is able to charge. You see that? He usually knocks him over. And then he can get close up. The fight is basically over once he gets close up. And then does the punch really knock out GXI Godzilla? I mean, Vengeance Godzilla? Not really. I mean, the punches are repetitive, but... uh. I'd say it kind of dazed him because he did punch him multiple times, but the end is what we need to talk about. That right here. This. So I have to say that this punch right here is probably the most devastating one. As it's basically an atomic pulse, but in the form of a punch, which makes it a little interesting because the atomic pulse does do something. The atomic punch, we've seen this before against Hell Godzilla. He has used it before. It's just we don't see it as often. How strong is it? That's very debatable. But it's able to stun Vengeance for enough time for Godzilla to sprint at him. Look at this. And it's very powerful. It's the power of his atomic breath or the pulse into a punch in a small distance. It does, it's technically an AoE attack. Yes, he can run. He runs as fast as Monster Burst Godzilla. Or at whatever you can place most of his so speed. He's extremely fast. And yes, his big cell, overweight self, can jump. He can literally jump. Somehow. Look at this. That he lands on him, he uses the force field. And now we get what happens with Silla. The atomic breath to the face. Is it dangerous? Kind of, I guess. But what we have to examine is how Godzilla in this decides to get up close to him and then fire the atomic breath. He will load it up, but it's not like a finishing trying to kill him. It's more like a what you call way of getting rid of someone because he's kind of trying just to like get someone off him that's kind of all he's doing and it's not like he if he wanted to kill vengeance he would have opened his mouth most likely and did that but he's not really trying to he's trying to finish the fight and win and he does win Easily in this form. Kaiser is more powerful than Silver. I don't, it's just is. But Silver would give one heck of a fight just because of reality bending and all the hacks he has. Now, this is where things kind of get a little interesting. What does the Atomic Breath do? Look at the duration. For around one to three seconds of firing it. He doesn't fire it for a long time. So it's not like he's, it's one of those attacks that he just sits on 
He does a quick one that knocks him out for a little bit. But it's it's a way to knock him out, not kill him. If he wanted to, he could have. That's why I want to go for now. He went to the fight like this. Now they unite. But did Tommy Brad do anything? Not really. Yeah. Lockzilla is able to kill or severely injure the creator. Look at this. This is one of my favorite combos. The team, the dream team. <laughs> Binge into GXI teaming, jumping on his back just like how the imposter does to him. Jumps off of him, runs at the Vengeance Godzilla, and then just atomic breaths him in the head. The only first of God, which does nothing, but then he does a suplex. <laughs> that is hilarious. Vengeance Godzilla uses reality bending. We'll actually get to the interesting part later. Wow. The only first God kills Blockzilla, just blocks destroyer. Rip for them and also rest in peace, Harambe. Today is the day he got shot. May his soul go to heaven. He did not deserve what happened to him. He was innocent. But now back to this. Junior does die. It is kind of sad. It's like he was right in front of him. He had there was not much he could do. Really not much he could do in that. We finally get a pretty sad moment. I got this kind of like from Godzilla versus Destroya, an emotional moment. One of the most powerful transformations in the whole show. The thermal form of Blockzilla. The transformation was able to shake the entire, uh, all of reality itself. And actually kind of damage it a little bit. How strong is this form? Look at this. Both able to incinerate an omniversal god. Now the debate is, is he the omniversal god or is he half of the, or is he like a, excuse me, mock omniversal god? Now, I consider him to be either a true, mock true form omniversal god. I mean, he can one shot basically a lot of characters. Because why would he just bring out one of his weaker forms into a fight? So my consideration, this is a mock true form. So not just a normal physical form. So that's what I'm going to say further. He's able to cut him in half and basically one shot him. Burning is thermal is so much more powerful at this point. He's more powerful than pre Godzilla vs. Vengeance Godzilla. Godzilla. Because he could definitely beat Kaiser and Thermal GXI at this form. Not kill him, but beat him overwhelming. That's my opinion. Yes, he will, but he could. But then the more, because he gains, even though he's weakened, he just gets more powerful over time. He could probably not beat the true form, the Kaiser or Thermal now. But this is a massive jump in power. How Godzilla is still solo, though? Mass still has a tough of breath, also does too much. Beams don't really affect the army most about the way you think. Now we have Mass still with thermal. I'll get to the good stuff. That still is able to reflect beams. Now, this is where the important stuff happens. Godzilla's reaction speed is insane. Look at him. He fires the beam at the imposter. He's just right there. But unfortunately, he gets thrown away. Now, this is a feat for the Omniverse God. He just, like, throws Godzilla through multiple dimensions. Which is kind of funny. That is just sad. Like, Godzilla just gets thrown... There are multiple alternate dimensions. All of these dimensions. I feel bad for him. 
Like, I do kind of feel bad for him. It's kind of, it's kind of unfortunate, but yeah, it looks like it hurt. He is floating and flying through multiple alternate dimensions. Tommy Rush that's true form humbles him. Is he able to one shot? Again, his true form can beat basically everyone. Even Void, even what's his name? Vengeance tries. There's nothing you can do at this point. His true form upscales the entire verse. Godzilla, the thing about the universe, God, he can reality warp things that he can control it. His beam can portal through stuff, even though he blocks it. The imposter still gets hit. Not his full power beam, but it just won't so much. This transformation shakes reality. It kind of messes everything up. The only verse of God also has a power called totality, or I'm going to go read it. So give me a second. I'm bad with memorizing names of things. It's probably definitely what I would miss. Totality or totally destruction, which does. Yeah. This is to find. True composite burning Godzilla. Not composite Godzilla's burning form, but true composite burning Godzilla. That is completely different. Don't even, like, try to say these two are similar. They're not in any way the same. They really aren't. So what he does is just destroy all of you. Oh, yeah, full. Currently, the Omniverse of God is not winning this fight. Even though he's only being attacked by someone who's using 0% of his power. He's able to completely ignore beams. He does not even use his four field at all. He just walks right through them like a champ. Like, the actual, like, gap, power gap between the Omniverse of God and GXI Godzilla's true composite brain Godzilla is just massive. Like, in no world are they even close at all. It is not close at all. And remember, the Omniversal God, after, I'll tell you, when he does, he does eventually go full power. And it's still not able to do anything. The beings do nothing. You might see the Omniversal God not getting affected by the beams. It's not like they're not doing anything. They're hurting him. He can't do anything. And at some point, the beams are hitting so hard, and the attacks are so hard that his instant regeneration side is functioning. Beams, the more he beams, the stronger it gets. Even though it's already pretty insane, his atomic breath just one shots. It's going to that like you know when someone gets one shotted. The more times he fires it, the infinitely more powerful he gets. It's beyond infinite power. It is quite actually above infinity. This is a composite, true, final, true composite infinite spiral heat ray. But it goes above infinity. It's kind of an unmeasurable number amount of how much more powerful it gets. Multiply that times infinity. This is currently his most powerful form. That was his final form. He hasn't peaked out yet. He's not peaked. In his strength, he's still gonna get stronger in the next parts, next seasons. He will get stronger, but currently, this is where he's at. Look at that, just walks through the beam. <laughs> miss it. Actually, I miss it. Fire is one of his. The only person guy at this point is probably at 50% power and is near full power, I mean. 
His beams do nothing. The atomic pulse is able to cripple him. <sighs> I'm back, guys. Hello. I don't know the other things recorded, but I just had an outage. Power, oh, I mean Wi-Fi outage. So let's hopefully are going to be able to get back to this. Let's go. So if you've noticed, if this is recording, if this is, if I get two videos, that each time he powers up, he goes, every atomic breath, he goes into a new Godzilla era. That's what I made special about it, to make it separate from the others. That each time he goes into a different era, every atomic breath, every next atomic breath will go to a different era. And the era after this, and the era after this, and the era after this. So it's basically him beaming, and then the next beam will go into a different era. Got to like, let's give an example. Show the Heisei, Heisei to Millennium, but we'll keep watching. One shot the tail. He destroys any part of him so it doesn't come back. At this point, the fight's not fair. Like, the only worst of that is just getting executed at this point. Every hit is so damaging and detrimental. He does actually get to absorb all of uh, true composite Godzilla's power. Yeah, he attempts and is successful. But is that really going to care? You can absorb his power all you want to increase your stats, but he doesn't care. He got this power to basically abuse that. If you are not reaching his power, his power is just built different. After that, he heals back up. Be able to go eat CXI Godzilla. And then beam him. You see, it doesn't do anything. He's perfectly fine. Well, this was actually a mistake right here. I could count this as Ken. He might be having a vision of the past. He does do it. This is all the power of all of reality times of fanny. That means just all of reality in general. Him. And that you have to also add that it's plus the power he absorbed all those multipliers. So that stacks onto that. And the longer it's in the air, the more powerful it gets. And that's his full power. All his power for one thing. You see him getting closer and closer. The only person got fires in the orbit does nothing. At this point, the fight is over. He's trying to bring the beam closer and powering it times more. This is definitely one of my favorite scenes. He tries and tries. The only verse of God does nothing. He actually gets still 0% of his power. It's no, doing nothing. It's still 0% destroying him. He throws all his power at him, and then this happens. This is just embarrassing. No effect. It almost the reason why the Omniverse got crippled is one, he's already weakened from the fight. Yeah, he could tank this on his own if he wasn't like this, but two, his power can't hold it anymore. If Godzilla wasn't there, he could just regenerate that, but he's basically dying. This is kind of like when he fought someone else in the past, but I'm not saying who. Look at this. That's the load of the final beam. Still 0% of his power. This completely kills the Umbi Frost God for good this time. And that also has totality destruction and total destruction. But he's also able to fix the effects too. Which makes him a pretty good character. He fix the effects of the Umbi Frost God. And that's that's about it.
that's all I wanted to talk about. This is the end of the video. I hope this helps. And, well, that's it. We're done.